It starts now. Okay. Welcome to the Jenkins Documentation Office Hours. Uh, today is January 12th, 2023. Uh, today we have myself, Mark Waite, and Bruno Varakpin joining us. Thank you all for being here. Uh, today on the agenda, a uh, couple things in the action items. One, uh, we have archived the docs mailing list. So just a quick uh, update on that. Blog posts, we have an update on uh, Debian 12 and what it will deliver. And uh, Mark, would you be able to share more about that? Or Sure, yeah, this is one that right. Bruno and I will probably talk as well about in the platform SIG meeting, but it has a documentation impact. Oh, so I know. discovered just yesterday that the next release of Debian scheduled mm -hmm. for 2023 will not include OpenJDK 11 at all. Oh, okay. The package won't be available in it. They're offering Java 17, which means they're really preparing also. I'm sure once Java 21 is available, they will include it, but that'll be, happen, a, what, six months or a year from now. Uh, so their Debian is correctly saying, look, Java 8 is done. That was done for them a while ago. Java 11 is really also done. Mm -hmm. the, the impact for us is that when they release in roughly April of 2023, our Linux install instructions will have to be, yeah. So what you see here is they, they don't commit to a final delivery date. What they commit to though, is they're currently planned for March 12th to be frozen. Exactly. Hard freeze. Mm -hmm. Full freeze is where they reach the final release. Usually it's a month or more between hard freeze and final delivery. So mm -hmm. I'm not expecting this before April. Uh, once they release it, we will probably switch the Jenkins Docker containers to use this new version of Debian. That makes sense. But users who are installing with the apt package or who are using our default instructions uh, won't be able to do that anymore because they'll it, our instructions tell them to install Java 11. So April is about the time we sh where we should probably start saying, maybe it really is time to transition the default instructions on, on at least Ubuntu and Debian Linux to use Java 17. Gotcha. And that makes sense with moving into the future, Java 17 is now available in Jenkins fully. So uh, right. no reason to not include it. A exactly. And, and there's no, there's no, it's not mandatory that they have to use Java 17 but us changing using this event, the release of Debian 12, as our excuse to say, we're switching also to document Java 17 as our preferred path, mm -hmm. feels feels like a healthy thing to do. Yeah, I agree. And it's not saying that Java 11 is going to get not to, not getting supported any longer. It's just a matter of, hey, Java 17 is new. We want to make sure that this is encouraged and provide the correct instructions for users. Right. And and. If they choose, oh, I'm going to install Java 11 instead of Java 17, great. It's just that about that time, we switched to where we say, we're going to recommend Java 17, not because that's the only thing we support, but because it's simpler to give those instructions in this case, and we do fully support it. Mm -hmm. Got it. Wonderful. Okay. Awesome. Thank you so much, Mark. That helps clarify all that. Uh, okay. Okay, for the rest of the agenda, uh, archive website tickets, small update on that, handling regression, how we're going to handle regressions on the Jenkins.io site itself, uh, some pull requests of note from the community, and uh, just a small discussion, short discussion about uh, one of the, uh, the using agents page in Jenkins. Uh, there was some feedback, and I would love to get some perspective on it from others to see how we can improve. Uh, anything else that I might have missed today, or does that cover it for everyone? Good agenda for me. Mm -hmm. Okay, for me too. All right, thank you very much. Uh, okay, so first thing on the list, uh, the uh, docs mailing list has been archived. We, it's made made read only, uh, and now uh, the main idea is we're using the docs uh, Jenkins docs Gitter for communication. Uh, so this is where we are announcing docs office hours. This is where we have discussions regarding documentation, um, just kind of any ideas here. And community.jenkins.io will be the uh, second location. 
and this is going to be for uh, more in-depth and involved conversations if there needs to be um, research, work done, anything that is more than, uh, you know, a short conversation would be best had here. Uh, and the nice thing about having it on community.jenkins.io is that it's available for everyone to see. Uh, much easier. Uh, everyone, not everyone might be using Gitter or the chat, but uh, if they have an account, they have the ability to see community. So uh, just another good place to have it and we'll make the transition to the future seamless. A uh, couple things, uh, a couple blog posts to highlight. Sorry. Uh, so today we just published our 2022 uh, recap newsletter for Jenkins. So huge and massive thanks to everyone uh, for their work on this. Uh, the entire community team came together and uh, really made this something special. There's a lot of great, great updates on here. Uh, Thank you to Roxanne from the CD Foundation for providing these image headers for us. They are wonderful and really make it stand out. Um, this is, a, uh, everyone's hard work is on display here. And uh, this is truly a test uh, example of the love and care and work that the that Jenkins has been getting for, since, uh, for 2022, sorry. Um, by all means, take, take a moment to uh, look it over, read it. We'll be tweeting it out and posting about it online. So um, this is everywhere now and it will be even more places by the end of the meeting. Uh, and then uh, a couple other blog posts that were recently published. Uh, Bruno had a blog post recently on running your Jenkins agent as a service. Again, uh, a nice tutorial, alternative methods of using your Jenkins agent. Uh, great instructions here and a really nice uh, just breakdown by Bruno. Thank you. Cool. And the other one here is John Mark Messen's blog for the Google Summer of, so Google Summer of Code Mentorship. Uh, we are getting a lot of participants. We're about 20 or so participants already signed up. Um, we're looking for mentors. We're looking for for uh, co-mentors, et cetera. Uh, anyone that is interested is more than welcome to come on and uh, sign up, help, you know, uh, contribute if they have that desire. Um, the blog post here mentions uh, more about what mentorship looks like, what it requires, what the expectations are, uh, where you can go to get more information regarding Google Summer of Code, for instance, um, and just provides a great little, uh, set of expectations ultimately. Uh, we did already talk about the Debian 12 uh, release and what that means for Jenkins and the Jenkins documentation. Uh, and yeah, is there anything else on that one, Mark, that you want to mention or? We no, actually I'm a little embarrassed. You, you asked, should it be on the agenda? I wasted the time describing it. It's done. Uh, that okay, one, cool. I think we have a, we have a good decision. We will, mm -hmm plan for as Debian 12 arrives, there are going to be a bunch of activities that will happen. Docker yep. container updates, documentation updates, etc. And as part of that, we'll switch to Java 17 for sure for that platform. Okay. Yeah, if ever you have some question about that later on tomorrow, we have the Jenkins platform SIG, where I will ask Mark stupid questions about that very subject. So stay tuned. Perfect time. Great. I'll be there. No worries. Um, Thank okay. you. Thank you. Uh, and then uh, the next on the uh, agenda here. So uh, we had a list of issues that were in JIRA still uh, that were assigned with the website label. These were issues relating to the Jenkins.io site. Um, we have now officially closed out all of the website tickets. Uh, anything that was irrelevant at this point in time, since there were some from 2017 and earlier, uh, to the ones that have come in recently have been migrated. Uh, anything that really should be discussed further or um, acted on has been migrated to the GitHub issue track issues uh, list now. So um, anything else has either been handled by just natural evolution of the Jenkins.io site or documentation um, has become, um, you know, uh, everything, things have moved past it in terms of update and version. Uh, or like I said, if it was super, if it was something that we want to work on and, and action on, it's been migrated so that we can keep that focus. The next thing in the agenda is how uh, we are going to handle regressions on the Jenkins.io site. 
Uh, I was able to talk with Mark uh, about this and get a little bit better understanding. And so the idea is that if there are regressions on Jenkins.io, such as the two examples we've got here, yeah, you've, uh, you've got to open. You've got to open those two because those two are oh, yeah. are somewhat sources of shame. Okay, this is the mark. The first one is the mark weight source of shame. <laughs> okay, so so what we see here is the Jenkins, what we call the jumbotron. It's the this thing that rotates down at the bottom, the big orange block. However, it stopped rotating apparently in November, late November of 2022. Yeah, so so we regressed the site, and we haven't. It's taken us almost eight weeks to detect this regression. So so apparently it's and and thank you. Keep scrolling down, Kevin, because oh, yeah. it's a good story. Special thanks to Vandit, who did the bisect to find out oh. which commit caused the caused the thing to first appear. Like, Keep blame. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Good job using a bisect. And and figuring out, hey, this is it. That's that's work that wow. none of us had to do. So very, very grateful to him. Now the question is, all right, what do we do next with it? And and the I like the technique that Jenkins Core uses, where if a detection, if a, a regression is detected in Jenkins Core, Basil Crow has been guiding people, we will give a very uh, we will give a time where the original regression is identified and the author of the original regression is given a, a reasonable amount of time to re either resolve it or we revert because we want to be functional, right? We want, we want to retain functionality. And in this case, the, the embarrassing part for me was because it took us eight weeks to detect the regression, I proposed that we need it fixed within one or two weeks because of just how long it took to detect it. It, it, it. I think the answer is it can't be that serious of a regression if we didn't get a bug report on it for eight weeks. Now, there are others where, for example, if the pipeline steps documentation disappears because of a, of a commit, that's an, for me, that one is critical. Lots of mm -hmm. users depend on it. We revert that thing in 24 hours or less, right? We revert that very, very quickly. So that was that was my thinking on it. And uh, so I can share my own little bit of shame here. So when the uh, I went to add some uh, updated logo images and they weren't all exactly the same size. Um, and now there we figured that out. And again, Vandit, thank you again for all of your work figuring this out. Uh, wonderful and. Yeah, uh, but this is something that is visual and functional to that end. Um, so again, is it affecting users so much that this isn't this needs to be resolved immediately or reverted immediately? Or um, is it something that we can take the time to look into and figure out and understand and, and resolve you know, in due time? Um, See, like and, Mark said. And this one for me is more severe because of its perception potential perception by sponsors right mm -hmm. i would not want jfrog who is a major contributor to the jenkins project or github a major contributor to feel that they were dwarfed by cloudbees just because we 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 sized the image wrong yeah. so so that that was the my concern on this one i think this one is more severe than the other one mm -hmm. again it's it's not an instantaneous we must revert it but rather this one has higher risk than that other one did. Right. And it's and a lot of that in this is the perspective, of course, and it, how that varies from each issue. Uh, and yeah, no, absolutely. So, uh, Mark, and uh, should we, and we, should we revert anything right now or should we leave these be for the time being? Well, the, this one actually has a proposed fix from Vandit. So Vandit proposed a fix in another pull request. Oh, okay. yep. And and I think this one is the, I think this one is the fix. Mm -hmm. And so so, but I would prefer to bring this one forward if we can, if mm -hmm. we can confirm yes, it really worked, and maybe okay. view the deployment, Kevin. Let's look at it while we're here. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so first we notice that the the jumbotron is not scrolling. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Now going onward, so that's not fixed. So that looks closer. Okay, now could you change your window size? Oh, yeah. Of course. Just go to go to a much smaller window or or whatever. Yeah. Uh, Open in a new tab and. Mm -hmm. Uh, just hold on one second. Uh, can you see my screen right now, Mark, or is it not? You can or... see the GitHub issue for the time being, but not the deployment. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, yeah. See. Okay. All right. Uh, let me put this in here then. Okay. Here, yeah. Just yeah. Do a Control yeah. Plus multiple times, and let's. Okay. Good. So it's not getting. It's not showing the CloudBees logo as enormous. Mm -hmm. In it. So I think. Vandit's solution looks pretty good to me. It looks much, much better than what we had before. Yeah, definitely. It's nice and clean and everything's yeah, similarly sized so that uh, everyone feels equal. Okay, so and I wanted to look at, at the actual code change because it may be that we just say we're going to, what well, that was 5909. We, we're just going to go ahead and merge it because if it, Okay, so what he did is he he just he just restored the old images. Good, that oh, works fine for me. It works. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and I think I know I was trying to find higher resolution versions of the logos and add them in, but forgot about the scaling. Well, well and and that's 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 the nature of these regressions in general, right? No shame mm -hmm. in that. That's the nature of a regression. Yep. Is is. Oh, I missed something. Okay, I missed it. Not a big deal. We're not gonna mm -hmm. not gonna worry about it. Okay, so I just merged it. I said, "Hey, okay. approved and merged." Oh, yep, there it is. Awesome. Thank you, Mark. Now there, there's still a bigger picture challenge that Erve noted in it of mm -hmm. how do we do images in general, mm -hmm. particular. But but that for me is a second question to be answered yeah. outside of fixing this regression. But mm -hmm. I had a discussion with Hervé today also regarding images because each time I propose something with images, Hervé comes back and says, hey, I can do better, and he does better. <laughs> right. And right. Uh, he was thinking of something to automate, you know, when you make a PR uh, for Jenkins IO, which would look at the images and propose a new version of the images, which would be compressed by a tool, whatever. And right. recite before compressing. <laughs> mm-hmm. Which I tend to forget. You know that, Mark. <laughs> Me too, Bruno. It's okay. Me too. All right. Then we're all in the same boat. Good. Um, yeah. So that's uh, regression handling is definitely going to um, be better when we can sit down and look at them and revert when needed and, and address everything appropriately. And this just helps us have those conversations and discover more of these little nuances that we can we can expand upon and, and make things better by. So, yeah, so great. so now the the open question for one of the questions that was open for me was how long should we wait before we revert? We talked about if it's a if it's that somehow it should be matched to the severity of the problem. Uh, any guidance there on how how do we match that? You know, is it? I'm open for suggestions. Yeah, and uh, is there is there a way that we could create a label, maybe for someone to add saying high severity, low severity, something like that? That's a good, that's a good idea, actually. Well, and, and one of the labels we don't have right now is regression. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Right? I think we've got, we've got a regression, uh, an issue called bug. We've got mm -hmm. a label called bug, but I don't see one that specifically says regression. Maybe we ought to just admit we're going to create a, mm -hmm. a regression mm -hmm. label. Mm -hmm. Because certainly regressions are bugs, but there are plenty of times when the bug is not a real is not a regression, it's something that was never right. Mm -hmm. And, and I mean, could we? Uh, go ahead, Kevin. Sorry. 
Oh, no, uh, just really quickly, I was just going to say, like, even if it's not a high or low severity thing, as long as it says regression, it's something that could be flagged that we have to look at. So, but okay, okay, now, now maybe we ought to go back to Jenkins Core because they have two concepts they have major bug and bug. Maybe we say major regression and regression. Hmm. Would that already be enough for us? So, let me see if I can find the labels on, on, on core. And uh, Bruno, while um, Mark's finding those, what, um, I cut you off earlier. What were yeah, you? Yeah, no, no problem, Kevin. I was just thinking out loud. <laughs> um, would it be possible to add a GitHub action of some sort or something else that would propose to revert in a um, certain amount of time when it's tagged with regression or major regression? You know, uh, even if it doesn't revert by itself, just, um, I don't know, put a comment somewhere saying we have to close that before that uh, time frame um, that, um, you know, mm -hmm. uh, am I making myself clear enough to be understood or not at all? Yeah, yeah, so yeah, absolutely. I, yeah, I, and I, I, I assume it's possible. I just have no idea how to do it. Neither <laughs> do I, but maybe Eve, the king of automation, could have a look at that. <laughs> yeah. So, so I do see in the labels. I see major bug, major RFE, bug, and RFE on the, on the, uh, Jenkins the core. on Jenkins core. Mm -hmm. uh, they and they have regression dash fix. So maybe we should maybe we should adopt the same thing. And say regret they're they're not using the Jenkins core does not use GitHub issues to track. And therefore we might want to say regression as a label and then regression fix as a label to use their their labeling as a way to tell people what's happening. What do you think? No, I guess odd idea. Sorry, I'm talking yeah. talking nonstop now. Major regression for me was a chance to say we need this we need this resolved within 24 hours or less, right? That's a serious problem. Regression mm -hmm. is everything else, and we get flexibility there. Yeah, that makes sense. So I if think. the two of you are okay with that, I'll just go ahead and create the label. Yeah, go ahead. Go cool with me. Thank you. Thanks very much, Mark. Okay, so new label. Regression fix resolves a regression in the, whoops. So regression fix has been created. And then we, are you okay with the idea of regression and major regression i am yeah okay i yeah. think that makes sense and bruno i like your idea a lot of having the github action maybe uh like you're saying you just have it like comment in the ticket or something to say like hey this needs to be reverted by this time yeah. because it's marked major or something right Okay, good. So regression and major regression lost significant capability for major or important content. Could okay. we make use of it just right now as we have at least one, which is Yes, a absolutely. In fact, we've got more than one. Oh, okay. Oh, rats. I just put the labels on the wrong place. Shame on me. Oh, shame on me. Delete. Sorry about that. Major regression and regression. I should not have done that. I have permissions that caused delete. My mistake. Okay, that was shameful. Well, that won't go real well. Oh, sorry. I just made the change to the Jenkins core repository <laughs> that I intended to make to 
<laughs> right. Okay. So the three labels were major, major. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So I, I got, I think I got the things that I mistakenly created fixed. Now let's do new label. All right. So major regression. Uh, significant. Significant. loss of content or functionality on the site. Okay, major regression. New label has been created, regression. Loss of content or functionality on the site. Okay, and then regression fix was the one that that one's already in there, if I'm not mistaken, Mark, because I can oh, see is. that one oh, here. Good. Yeah. yeah. Oh, good. Regression okay. Fix. Oh, yeah. very good. Okay. All right. Mm, nice. Look at that. Okay, good. So now that's there. Oh, I can just go into the Dr. Off to get the other one. Yeah, and that one is, again, I think it's this oh, right. one even is just a regression. It's not a major regression, right? This is not one where we say we've got to roll it back immediately. Mm -hmm. Right. And the other one's been fixed by virtue of, of merging that pull request. So that one's all set, actually. Oh, right. Good. Okay. Yep. Okay. And then... And then... Was it uh, major regression or regression major? Major, major regression. dash okay. regression, yeah, but okay. but nonetheless, we don't want to use it for that. Yeah, no, 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 yeah, of course. Uh, I just wanted to put them in here at least. Okay, all right. Um, we are coming up on time, so uh, I would like to just kind of move through the next couple of items here. Um, mostly just some pull requests that have come through recently. Uh, this one here is um, an update to or adding the updating Jenkins section. Uh, this one is actually also from Vandi. So uh, thank you again to Vandi for all the work. This is a, a lot of content to add, update and review. Um, so this will take a little bit longer and we do need to take our time with this, make sure everything's correct, verified and uh, ready to go to be put into this section. Um, updating Jenkins is a very, very important action and process to take uh, and having guides and information that will help users to perform those actions is amazing and goes a long way. Um, Vendi, it's already added his uh, author file, Chris Stern, others have commented on here for updating and reviewing. Um, if there's anything that anyone would like, would like to add or find out more about what we're doing here, uh, by all means, check it out, share, uh, interact. If you want to submit a feed review or con uh, comment, by all means. Um, uh, the second one here is a new reverse proxy uh, edition. It's for light uh, TTPD. Something more simple or not as much content, but needs to be tested and, and verified before adding. Um, if you feel like joining in and doing any testing, by all means. Uh, and then finally, there is uh, the idea of uninstall uninstalling a plugin from Docker. Um, so this right now is currently being documented in the Docker uh, repository. So uh, this is not part of the Jenkins documentation just yet, but uh, is super useful and the information is relevant across the board. So will most likely be added. Um, once it's yeah. properly documented here. I'm trying to help with this one, but I'm having some problems with the existing documentation, um, you know, using the um, Java client, uh, you know, the jar the Java client. Um, the list of comments that were available aren't all available these days. For example, you can't remove a plugin with a Java client these days, or maybe the command is hidden, whatever. It doesn't work. Um, wondering what to do. I, I think the answer it doesn't exist, right? I don't. I wasn't sure that. So, did, were there indications that it someday that in the past it did exist? 
I don't know, the documentation was written uh, as if this was existing. So I suppose at one time it existed, but I have no proof. I just don't know. And that was me is I know what oh. I see in my Jenkins installation and my Jenkins installation definitely does not have that command. Oh, mine. Okay, I was wondering, maybe because I'm using, you know, the weekly release, the very latest one, maybe it just disappeared at some time, but uh, no, it just never, ever existed. And, and that I don't know. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have to find out. Yeah, and uh, anyone else who wants to check in, share input, try some stuff out, do some testing, whatever have you, ultimately, yes. you're more welcome in. to. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, this is a community project as always. So, uh, great. And yeah, we, this might be something we need to talk to the Docker experts about. So if that's the case, we will do so. Um, outside of that, it's being you know addressed and investigated and Bruno's already done a bunch of legwork on there. So we'll see what happens. Um, outside of that, I don't think we're gonna get to the uh, using agents page today, which is fine. We'll just ignore that for the time being. Uh, and I want to make sure we end on time. So uh, with that being said, thank you all for coming and uh, participating and sharing here. I really appreciate it. Uh, and I hope that uh, everyone has had a wonderful start to the new year and is continuing uh, all the prosperity that we've had in the last few months. So thank you as always. And uh, this recording will be available in 24 to 48 hours. Take care.